calling my whole government name would be a problem. <laughs> said my, you said Angela, it was a problem. You said Faith, it was a problem. But now I, if I embrace Angela Faith. Amen? Yes. All right, I'm going to say a quick word of prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day, this Sunday, Lord. Yeah. Lord, we just thank you. Yeah. We thank you. So many things we could list and say, but Lord, we just thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We don't want to take life for granted. We don't want to take things that have happened for granted. We don't want to take our health for granted. We don't want to take our families for granted. So we say thank you. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, today as I stand here to give what I believe you've given to me, Lord, I ask that I decrease so that you can increase, Lord. Whoever needs to hear this message, and I believe we all need to hear the message, but whoever it's for, if it's for all of us, Lord, help us to receive it, to take it, to process it, to digest it, Lord, and that we will all be who you've called us to be in this season, in this hour, in this time. And we just thank you right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen, amen. Well, I want to first say thank you, Lord, for making it through uh, Hurricane Ian. Yes. And we say that we are, if you're a Floridian, you used to um, Ian. You used to hurricanes. and But truth be told, it doesn't make it any easier when you have those hurricanes because all of the possible danger that's coming down the line or could happen. The uncertainty of life can cause you much, much stress. So for everybody that I see here, power, no power, um, whatever your situation is, with your life, you can rebuild. Yes. If you have no life, then it's, it's all done. And only what you've done up to that point would have mattered. Who would they say you are? Who would you have been for Christ? What is your legacy if your life had been taken away in that moment. You ever thought about that? If you would not have made it through Ian, and if, I don't know if you saw, but some people had fluke accidents. Just random stuff that happened and didn't make any sense. Somebody was saying they were doing something and something wall came in and washed somebody out to sea. They were here, they were here visiting somebody else and they didn't go back home. What would your legacy be in that moment? So, I first want to thank my husband. I, I, I'm not following the words in, in the thing of Brother Tony, but I am. Because today, um, last night I wasn't, I wasn't faring well. And he just asked me what I needed. Then this morning, he was just like, babe, I took everything into the car. You know, babe, what can I do? What can I do? And you take that for granted until you don't have somebody that's not there for you or that don't care about what you need. And would know that, it, he knows that the devil causes havoc on Sunday mornings a lot of times, so let's, 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 let's cut him off at the head. Amen. Amen? So I'm thankful for my husband. You are awesome, honey. I, I can't imagine life without you. I had to kiss a couple of frogs, Lord, to get my friends, but I got it, Lord. I got it! <laughs> so I thank you. Listen, we don't like to talk about the bad stuff that went on in our life. We want to talk about all the good stuff. But let me tell you, if you be honest, there's been some bad stuff that done happened and we done did. I mean, maybe not y'all, but me. So today is not one of those um, run around the church, shout, do a cartwheel. It's a check yourself message. It's a self-assessment. I don't know if you've been paying attention but when I look over the messages that we've had, um, even recently, but even before, they all kind of, they all to me kind of be a, a build up. And then somebody else taking it, taking a different variation. Um, but the point, but the Tony been talking about choices and different variations of choices and generational curses and where you are now are a result of the choices that you made. Um, the last one though, Pastor Gurley said, is the if, then the then. We, it was a pathway to blessings. So we want the path, we want the blessings, but the scriptures say if, and then it's then. I know, um, gosh, I was 
one more. Look, I was, this is not in a particular order because it was like he's been downloading this stuff to me for a minute. So much so that I was like, Lord, should I change it? Because other people talked about it and I said somebody on Facebook Live and I said this. And we have to get the message until we get the message. We say you have to see it before you see it. You got to get the message until you get the message. So the first thing we're going to do is take a pretest. Y'all been in school, when, you, when they give you a test, the teacher ain't taught you nothing. But she want to see where you are. Now, if we were going to take a test and you was going to pass it to your neighbor and they was going to grade it, you know we might not tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help us God. We're going to find a way to make the words look better, seem better, what's being said better. We like things to, we, don't, we, we just don't want to put ourselves in a negative light. But sometimes, we got to put ourselves in that mirror and say, this is who I am. Now, it doesn't mean that you would stay. People like to say, this is who I am, this is how I've been all my life. No. When you get with God, you cannot be with the Lord and have an encounter with him and stay the same. If you are, I'm going to say this, you're not spending time with him. Because these two things came, one of these things don't belong here. So if you are spending time with God, you say, but there's nothing about your life that says that. There's a problem. So our first test, and this is just, I wouldn't even say write it down, your answers down, because you might not want your neighbor to see it or somebody find your paper. So the first one says, how do you rate yourself as a Christian? It's a scale of one to five. Five is unperfect. Ain't perfect things in here? If we, is, if we are, we already know we got a problem <laughs> off, off top. I'm going to use one as a God knows my heart. God knows my heart is what people use when they don't want to do right or they're not doing right and they want to have an excuse for it. And honestly, he does know your heart. But here's the problem. He knows your heart more than you want to put on. He knows those thoughts. He knows why you do things. And so the first one is how do you rate yourself as a Christian? One to five. Five being perfect. One, God no heart. Do people that encounter you know that you are a Christian without you telling them? Do people that encounter you know that you're a Christian without you telling them? Number three, how, why, or why not? Because everybody the answer is not going to be yes. So how do they know, why do they know, or why don't they know? When is the last time that you witnessed to someone about Christ? The whole point of Christianity is to convert souls for Christ. So when is the last time that you went? And I'm saying went because we can witness wherever we are. But when is the last time you told somebody about the goodness of God and tried to tell them that they need their life changed and they need to be saved? Are you winning souls for Christ? So the person was, are you witnessing? Are you winning souls for Christ? Two more. Are you set apart? Last one. Do the places you visit, hang, or frequent, if Jesus was in his, is in a physical being and you took him with you, would you still go with him sitting right next to you? So, if he was a physical being, we know God is everywhere, but sometimes it's out of sight, out of mind. If he was a physical being, do the places you go, hang, visit, and frequent, would they represent Christ? And would you take it with you there? So, the 
That is the first part. That's just a test. That's a self-assessment. I think that's what they call it, right? Self-assessment? That did something to me because we talk about being Christ-like and our good not being evil spoken of. But that's what we say and we sing. But when we match our lives alongside the word of God, do we line up or are we playing? Only this is not for me to judge anybody and I, I had to judge and check me. But this is the thing, you got to be honest with you. I can tell you something, but you got to be honest with you, who you are, where you are, and why are you there? Choices. We want all these things, but we don't want to do the if to get to then. That's why I was saying when God was, every message that's been coming across, there was some more, but just those are things that stuck out. We are in a place where we just, we are in this mentality that I just want to fit in. So much so that the church does not look like the Bible. And I'm talking about this building. The people that attend buildings that say they're going to church. We don't match what it says. We don't have grace for one another. We don't have love with one another. We don't even want to give out grace or mercy until it's me that needs the grace and mercy. And the problem with that is, your time will come. No perfect people, your time will come that you will need somebody, some grace, some something. And then, what about all the mean Christians? <laughs> The whole purpose of the word Christian, we learned this in Sunday school, Christ-like. What mean, is, is God mean? It doesn't mean that he doesn't have wrath and that there's not different sides of him, but he's not mean. Where's the compassion? Where's the love? Whew. Listen, this is a, a self-check for everybody and for me first. I noticed that in the church, we do a lot of inclusion, um, conforming. Um, I don't want anybody to feel bad. But truth be told, for any of you that was, um, not say years and years ago, that's the kind of thing that checked you. When you came to church, you felt bad by how you left how you were living, what you did the night before. Now, it don't mean that sometimes you ain't gonna do it that same night, but it, it was a gut punch because you felt like, I'm not living what they're living. Now, they, they didn't have to be living right, but it was something about the house of God, the people of God, the reverence that people have for God that the saints now have lost. We can do it all. Oh, we can do a little bit of that. We can do a little bit of this. We can do a little bit of that. We can. But at what cost to who is watching you? Somebody will never pick up a Bible. They will never listen to a sermon. But they watch you. You ever had, I remember years ago, I, was, I went to a salon for something and I was trying to tell somebody I was like, I, I can't remember what we did. And the girl came up and said, oh, you and your husband went to the movies and then y'all went to dinner and blah, 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 blah. And she gave me a rundown of my day. That's first of all, when I knew I wrote too much on Facebook. <laughs> but she gave me a rundown. Somebody is watching you. That could be your Facebook page, your Instagram, your Twitter, your TikTok. Uh-huh, she gonna give me a whole scripture but in a few more minutes, I know it's gonna go left, right? That's just what we have been conditioned to do. And we can throw a couple of scriptures out there and say, God said, then we're good. But the person that sees all that you can't hide from knows your truth and he has your final destiny and your fate in his hand. 
So, um, the scripture that was given to me was Romans 12 and 2. And it says, And be not conformed to this world, but ye can transform by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So, here's the thing. Conform and adapt. Two different words, similar meanings. But when you talk about conform, it's usually associated with your principles. So when the Bible says, be not conformed, don't change your principles to the world's principles. Now, adapt, when we went to, when COVID hit, we did virtual church. We changed a little things. We started doing masks. We started doing different stuff. We were adapting. But conform, that's changing your principles, who you are. And it also said that it, um, well, okay, so, that part was it. When it says be transformed, transform says make a thorough or drastic change, usually in appearance and character. How is your character? And for that matter, how's your appearance? Oh, it's quiet. <laughs> I, 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 I know, I know. I laugh because it hit me like that too. It's just one of the things you just sit in the room looking like, what I say? Because he's checking me. I think about, people always used to say the Angie pose on Facebook. The pose I used to do when I take pictures. I didn't see anything wrong with it. But when God started to change some things, then be transformed. That's not what I want people to see when they see me. That's not somebody that's, even in fun, that doesn't mean you can't have fun, don't get me wrong, but even somebody's going to your page to see if she's really living this thing out. And we're in the land of social media, so I'm using your page, but somebody wanna see if what you say is what you live. They dissect, they screenshot, they zoom in, they wanna see. Like, if you lose weight, they want to see how much they If you gain weight, I want to see how big she done got. Y'all ain't never did that before? No? Well, okay, look, let's do this. Okay, well, we have. So, um, there is a game. It is called Among Us. And that's the title of my message, Among Us. Sorry. Has, has anybody heard of imposter? Yeah. Okay, so imposter is a person who pretends to be someone else in order to deceive others, especially for fraudulent gain. Okay. The game is called Among Us. So how the game is set up, you have a group of people and they may or may not have costumes put a hat, mask, whatever. But everybody has a task to do. But there's an imposter in the game. Somebody is there to pretend like they're playing the game but actually trying to kill you. So when you log on to this game, it tells you if you're the imposter. So people are trying to guess as people die Pastor is. Because we're all pretending. We're, well, we're all doing a task, but we got to see, you got to do the task and see who's not doing the task at the same time. How you win is you pick who the imposter is, who you guess the imposter is. But sometimes the imposter wins because they done killed everybody because they done pretended well enough. So, there's more to this game, I'm gonna go back to it, but I thought about church. People come to church, say but not say. And a lot of us know how to shando and run and shout and say certain scriptures. It's some people that can talk you or, or preach you under 
under the pew, roll you around, and don't have not one relationship with Jesus. They've learned how to be the imposter. Mm -mm, Siri, ain't asking nothing about no web. She said she found it on the web. I ain't asking you, Siri, nothing. I ain't asking that. Right, Siri, Siri being an imposter. So, think about the people you have around you right now. If there was an imposter among us, you would have to do your task but also find out who is trying to kill you and who's not doing their task. That's a lot. Because you still got to complete your task. You got to, everybody got tasks to do, but the imposter has been given the task of trying to kill you. <laughs> Listen, right, right, Bill says she don't like that game. The thing about it is that that game did so much for me when I was just thinking about because we, we live our lives as Christians, but sometimes we're the imposter. And I'm not talking about trying to kill somebody, but we are. If you are faking like you're living for God and you're not, somebody's soul might die. Somebody's example of Christ might be gone. You know, um, when you look at our life and our changes, when you were 18, your goal was one thing. When you got to 21, your goal was something different. When you got to 25, it was something different. Now, it doesn't mean you don't have some core goals together if you want to be a wife or a husband or you want to be a millionaire, whatever it is. But your goals change based upon your age and your experience and your knowledge. And what do you think is possible? Because if I want to be an Olympic athlete and I wait until I got nine and everything broke down, it's probably not going to happen at this moment. So your goals going to change a little bit, right? And that's fine. You're supposed to grow and evolve. You know, growing up, I remember everybody saying this sermon about holiness or hell. And that was why people used to say, and I didn't really understand it then, because I was a little too young. But, oh, I don't go to church anymore. They preach holiness or hell, fire and brimstone, holiness or hell. Now that don't sound so bad. Because we've gotten, we do overcorrection in the body of Christ. Instead of just dealing what is, that we are still to love the unsaved and, and tell the word of God to be an example by our actions, we just want to say, I don't want anybody to feel bad for what they're doing, so I'm not going to talk about what God said about it. We are overcorrecting, and it has left the church in a state of, we look like the world. So is the world the imposter or are we the imposter? Because when you, let's say, um, change, when you transform, it's a drastic, right? So when it's drastic, there's a difference. If you're unsaved self look like your saved self, Houston, we have a problem. If your single self look like your married self, we have a problem. <laughs> a, hu a huge problem. If your holy self look like your unholy self, we have a problem. Your clean self look like your unclean self. At that point, it's not a problem. You are being an imposter. You fake. You plan to blend in to get what we feel like Christians get, 
But our ultimate goal is to lead people to Christ and make it to heaven. If your life ain't doing that, we have a problem. Because you have to do the if to get the then. Right? Okay. So, I don't know if you realize it or not, but there's been a long plot of the enemy to assassinate the body of Christ and the Christians. Not physically, Tony. <laughs> Your eyes look good. Not physically. But, you know, I, I always look up the, the meaning to words because we use words and sometimes they're not actually the meaning, it's just what we heard somebody say. And I get that from my husband, he a human the Lord, and I don't know what he be saying sometimes. It just makes no sense to me. But when you hear assassin, you think about all these ninja movies and stuff like that. But assassin is a murderer, but by a surprise attack. Impasta is trying to kill you by blending in. So there are assassins because what I do is, if I'm at every event, all the unsaved people are, you can have an anointing and a calling on your life, but they don't respect it because you are where I am every time. Where's the set apart? Where is the be transformed? Where's that at? When you walk for God, you're going to feel alone. When it's, we always use that road and say, broad is this and narrow. But have you ever thought about sticking your body, whatever size you are, right now, in a narrow space? If you had to go from here to that door and it was really narrow, it's going to be uncomfortable. You're going to have to squeeze and tuck and push some stuff in and try to drag it on down. It's uncomfortable. It would be easy just to go around. But that is not what God has called us to be. They got to see somebody. Somebody. Show who God is. And it's not when it's convenient. And do we make mistakes? Do I make mistakes? Absolutely. But my goal now is to live out loud and on purpose as a Christian and to say that there are some real saints. There are some real... You cannot have a copycat if there's not an original. We always look at oh, all the... They, well, not people say that all the saints, are, all the Christians are fake. All the Christians are this. But there got to be some original Holy Ghost field people. And I know this is not my normal type of message, but this is, oh, in this time, consequences. And you want the blessings of God, but there's, there are some precursors you got to do first. You know, when you do, uh, you want a loan, you go to the bank, you got to fill out this application. And then you also got to turn in the paperwork they require. There are some if you do this, then you can get this. We don't like the if. The if take too much work. First Corinthians 15, 58 says, Be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Always. Always. Sometimes. I'm going to say sometimes. A lot of times. It don't feel good. It don't feel good. And especially if you have not been consistently representing Christ where you go and how you do and in your actions. So when you got to come back and say, hey, I know that that might be what I did before, but God has showed me that there's a different way. Let them see the change in you. Problem is, we don't want to admit when we're not doing right. We don't want to admit where we are. So then when we get trying to show somebody, all they can remember is your past. Like, let them know that, you know what? God showed me this. Let me show you what God showed me. There's an opportunity to witness. To show that there's a change in you. 2 Timothy 2 and 21, it says, um, Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself, from what is dishonorable, he will be a vessel for honorable use, set apart as holy, 
useful to the master of the house, ready for every good work. Did he say get ready? He said ready. Ready. I want to be ready, y'all. I don't want to have to get ready. You know what, what the kids say? You stay ready? You don't have to get ready? Is that what it is? Stay ready as a get ready? Right. I, and I'm talking about me, y'all. And people say, oh, it don't take all that. Yes, it do. Yes, it do. Because the first thing gonna happen when you when you backslide and you fall out or fall do something, they gonna be like, uh huh, she, I knew she wasn't. Uh, yeah, da, 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 da. It don't let nobody take you what it take for you to live for Christ. Amen. If they can come in wherever you like, you in the store, you hear them talking loud about what they did the night before and the cussing and the this and the other. Why you can't talk about the goodness of the Lord like they do? Why we can't be excited about God to live as a Christian on purpose? Not trying to make you feel like I'm saved, but let it be so much of your habit. And I have to auto-correct myself now. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> that when things happen, like even when the storm first happened, I was like, Lord, I thank God for we not losing power. Because they were like, we always lose power. As soon as the wind blow, we were one of the last ones to lose power. Now, you say what you want to say, but I said it. I said a declaration outside to some neighbors. And they was like, we lose power. They said, I said, I'm crazy enough to believe God that we won't. And they were looking at me like I'm crazy. So then when the next day we, we had it, they was like, you, you praying? You still praying? But this is the thing. We got to dare to live for God with faith on purpose out loud and stop acting like we shame to tell the testimony after. No, I told you God was going to keep my lights on. Not granted, they did go off. But we had them longer than everybody else did. You say what you want to say. We got to have crazy faith. You know when God is trying to do some things in our life and he, you know we always talk about um, God has a ministry to birth in us. He wants to birth things in our life. I really believe we have a lot of ministries in this building, gifts and talents that we have been um some of us seem like we are infertile. Some of us um, have miscarriages. Some of us been pregnant for a long, 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 long time. But you know, when you go to a hospital room, it has to be sterile. You in a room by yourself. Most time your family and stuff can be they can look through a window. But that's what God will do for us. He will put us by ourselves. He will isolate us. Sometimes people don't understand why, because I'm set apart. I'm trying to be steadfast and unmovable, and sometimes you get distractions. And when that's the case, it's okay to say, Lord, I need to reset. Tell me what I need to do. I need to hear from you. Because in the middle of your struggle and your chaos and your life and your challenges and your trials who seem very large, when you're in a place where you have been consecrated and set apart, I'm telling you that you can hear from God and it ain't a mighty voice that can voice, voice so loud. He's be like, hey, just go do this. Hey, go do that. And you be like, Lord, I thank you. I ain't think about that. Because it's, a play, it's something about spending time with him and just, just sitting in his presence. That's, that's a hard thing to do. For any of you guys who are busy doing things just to sit still, because I don't know about y'all, when I do, I start thinking about what I need to wash, what I got to go do, and I just start thinking about a whole line of things. But sit still. Be still and know that I'm God. Just sit. Have y'all ever tried just sitting? You can do it? Your mind don't wander? Well, what I, okay, so sitting, I can sit. Here's the problem, my mind is in, my mind is somewhere else, a different address, doing 20 things. I done lined up what it is that I have to do. The problem is, that's not helping him speak to me and me hear him, him downloading in me, because God don't work in a box. 
Tony, you had a puppet ministry. You might want to know puppet, a puppet for Jesus. What? That's stupid. But how many lives and children, adults now, still remember that puppet and the mess they got? They act like the puppet was talking to them. Because he doesn't work how we want him to work. He has a plan. He's waiting on you to submit your will to his. So, how do you spot an imposter? First of all, and where's my dad? The spirit takes spirit. But here's the problem. If your spirit ain't right, you ain't gonna know how to pick up the imposter because he's doing what you're doing. So you might want to check yourself and get connected to God first so that when the imposter comes around, you... I know Cedric and I have been somewhere and we've been around couples and then, you know, everybody's smiling and stuff. We be like, something ain't right. We don't know what it is. You be like, something, something a little off. We found out later, but that was because it did. So we, uh, uh, uh. We have disagreements, but I, I know different, different disagreements and <clears throat> something ain't right. So you gotta put yourself in a place that you can hear from God. A couple of more scriptures and then I'm gonna um, be done. This is just, listen, it's a test, but it is for you to go back and study for your own test. Give, your test, give, yourself, give a test to yourself at home, periodically, to see where you measure up. First Corinthians, okay, we already did that. First, I did First Corinthians 15 and 58. Be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Philippians 1, 27, conduct, your, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or remain absent, I will hear of you that you are standing firm in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. And that's amazing right there. We say, whether I'm here or not. Because we often know how to, we, we do certain things around certain people who we think have influence. If it's the pastor or somebody we think is a spiritual somebody. But this says, I need to know that when you're not around me and nobody else is watching, transform your character, con I mean, your, your, your character, not, con not conform, but what principles would you stick with when no one is watching? There was one more scripture. Consistency, guys, is the key. Consistency is the key. There was one scripture I wrote down. I don't know why I did it. I was just, look, it just came to me. I wrote it by hand. Oh, I think I got it. I guess not. Second Chronicles 7 and 14. If my people, here's the if, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, it goes and, seek my face and turn from your wicked ways, then we're going to go ahead and go, if my people. That's an if. That means that you have something to do. It is not an automatic. That ain't your, uh, it just got to happen. But you have something to do first. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray. So you got to humble yourself. You got to pray and seek my face and turn from your wicked ways. If you are still doing the same thing, you ain't turned from your wicked ways. If there is no difference between clean and unclean, you ain't turned from your wicked ways. If you look like everybody else, you ain't turned from your wicked ways. This ain't no judgment. You ain't turned. It's facts. So it says, "Then I will hear. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins." 
and heal their land. Now y'all know we need this land healed. But it starts with us being real Christians and not imposters. Originally I was gonna to, going to tie this with the real saints, real Christians. Stand up. Because that's what it boils down to. Are you willing to live for real? Not watered down, not based upon my life experiences. Well, that happened to me and I made it. Okay. But some point in time, there has to be a shift. Amen. And God is telling us it's time for us to shift. We talk about how bad the world is, what the world got going on. You know, you just look at the news, you be like, oh my God, it's more and more wicked. I, one last thing, I remember I was, I don't know what I was looking at the other day, but I know now that we don't like to call sin, sin. We have nice, beautiful names for it. So, if someone's lying, we don't say they're lying, what we say? Misspoken, Mis white lie, fear being, uh, mistruth, storytelling, Huh? You forgot. Oh, I, forgot. I forgot. And if you didn't forget, that's not true. Infidelity. And entanglement. Girl, bye. But it sounds better than saying I cheated. Or I went outside my marriage. That don't sound good. A situationship. A situationship. Listen, it was more, I couldn't think of them off the top of my head, and I wrote them down somewhere, but I don't know the paper. But I was like, why? Because the truth don't sound good. And so instead of the church saying, and again, not talking about being mean Christians, but standing on God's word and not letting your principles waver. The last one was, um, they were, somebody committed suicide. And they said they unalived themselves. Oh, unalived themselves oh, is the name. Yes. Because it don't sound good that I said whoever killed himself, correct? So they unalived themselves. Y'all know the result is still the same. You did. So I'm just saying, guys, as we go throughout the rest of this time, first of all, we're going to be thankful that we made it. But we, I know that I'm leaving here today saying, my post-test, can we do better as Christians? This is your test. This is your question number one. Will you actively witness for Christ? And does your life line up with the word of God? We have learned to play church, but will the real Christians stand up so we'll know who the imposters are? So we can have these seats filled, but with men and women of Christ that want to love God, that want to help other people. Amen? And this song, I can look good. When I want to I know the right thing to say I cover up What I don't want you to see But you see it anyway Maybe I think I can fool you Or maybe I'm fooling myself I want to change But I don't know how And Lord, I need your
I'm tired of hiding my weakness I'm tired of trying to look strong I don't want to say that everything is fine When there's so much wrong Tell me again that you love me Though it's more than my heart understands I like them all my disguises And show you who I am Come on, sing it with me one more time no more pretending, no more pretending, no more pretending, Lord I know. Everything is not okay.